right, guys, we're back. It's another episode of the Fearless Pursuit of Freedom podcast. And today I brought on a special guest, uh, a thankful recommendation from a good friend, Josh Kohler, and he's going to teach us how to run our businesses better. And we all need that. So um, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, everybody, welcome David Richter. Um, David, thanks for coming on, man. Really honored to be on here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you brought, uh, uh, introduce your COO. Yeah, my oh. COO slash integrator, John Cruz. He's also a part of the company that I have started. So he's on here also, John, if you just want to say hey. Yes. Hey, guys. Hey, John. Hey, thanks. Uh, I think we'll be hearing a lot from you here in this conversation. So, uh, but first, David, uh, where are you based out of? And um, before you started this company, what made you think about this company and what brought you into the real estate realm? Sure. I'll just jump into my story. Right now I'm in Richmond, Virginia, but that's not where I started. I was up in Northwest Indiana, right outside of Chicago. That's how yeah. Josh knows me. I grew up with Josh Color. Oh. Uh, we went to the same high school, you know, same. We knew each other <clears> since <throat> we were kids. So I've known, nice. I've known Josh a long time. But for my personal story in real estate, in college, someone gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which yeah. I know a lot of people started that way. So I read that book and it just totally opened up my mind and not just to real estate, but just finances and just a different way of thinking. So th since then, I, I've always been an avid reader. So I attribute a lot of the mindset being, coming from a lot of the things that I've read. So that first book really launched that real estate itch. So I said, okay, I'm done reading about this stuff because once I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I re read a whole bunch of other stuff in college. And I'm like, I need to actually do something. Right. So I did. I, I bought my first house when I was 19. And I fixed it up, did like a FHA 203K loan, was into it about 65, 70% all fixed up. So I was like, yes, this is pretty good. So I lived in it for the first two years, was, uh, got married, uh, had, you know, had a great first two years in that house. And then two years later, we moved to a different house and I rent to own that first house. And the guy that was the actual tenant was super tenant. Uh, he paid early, paid you know, paid for six months and then he cashed me out. I don't know if you know, like the default rate on lease options, but it's very high where they yeah. don't actually cash you out. Right. So for my first, my first real personal deal that I did to have that experience, it was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. So yeah. that was my first actual introduction to my own, my own deals. But then I also started working with a company up in Northwest Indiana that was doing when I first started, probably 90 to 150 wholesale deals a year. Yeah. And during, during the five or six years that we were there, at the highest point, we were doing 30 deals a month and 300 deals a year between wholesaling, wow. fixing and flipping. We were lease optioning, renting. So we were doing basically anything you can think of in the real estate realm. Yeah. And during those years, I sat in every single seat, acquisitions, sales, mm -hmm. finance, uh, marketing, closings. Like I got a full suite of experience in, in every single seat in that real estate company. Yeah. So then after five years, we had a life change and we moved to the Richmond, Virginia area. And I worked with a guy there too, because I, I love real estate. And it gives you, that's another thing about real estate. It gives you options because yeah. where, where I went, I already had connections basically across the whole country because we were a part of masterminds. We were part of different groups. So I was able to reach out to someone and say, hey, do you know of anyone that needs help or whatnot? And he was like, yeah, I think I need some help. So yeah. I hooked up with him when I came to Richmond. And so for the last year, I've been more of kind of that COO or whatnot in the in that business too. But then I was thinking during that whole year, one of the big tasks we did was clean up this investor's books because a lot of investors don't have a clean set of financials to be able to make the decisions they need to make. <laughs> and Brandon's raising his hand. So yeah. I'll, there's a ton of investors out there that don't know their numbers. You've got, you've got the marketing down, you've got sales down, you've got your operations. You might be humming on all those systems. I, if at the beginning of the call, I mentioned John as my integrator, that's an EOS term from the yeah. book traction. So, you know, you might have some type of system for all those things, but a lot of people don't have a system for their finances. Right. And that was something as I had sat in all those different seats in the real estate investing world, I liked the finance seat not necessarily doing the transactions and the entries and doing all of that stuff, but taking that and saying, how can I tell the story of this company and say, is this a healthy company? 
Is this not a healthy company? Is the owner healthy? You know, like, are, are they doing the right things to be able to be in business? Because when the crash came in 2008 and nine, a lot of people were built up on the inflation of the economy. And yeah. they didn't have that structure and that financial backbone because the sales and marketing, that is, they go hand in hand with finances. Because if you're doing the marketing and sales and you're busting your behind, getting those deals and doing the things to actually generate the income, then you're not telling that income where to go. You're not a real business. So, and you're going to crash and burn at one point, like a lot of people did at the first crash, the recession in 2008 and nine, that a lot of people had to go out of business. So if you don't have that system, that backbone, you're, it's, it's your foundation. You got to make sure that you're healthy enough when it's something like that comes up that yeah. you actually have something to be able to fall back on. So that's really what I'm on a mission on. I'm on a mission to help uh, entrepreneurs and re especially real estate investors know their numbers, automate their profit and grow and keep more of their profit. And that's what I wrote a book, Less Stress, More Profit. Which yeah. I, Brandon has a copy too, but this book is basically all about that. And it's about how can an investor not, basically build a recession-proof business. And that's what I'm on a mission to do because I'm very passionate about that. And I also have John on the call too. And he's a big part of this company where we only help about 10, we want to only help about 10 investors a quarter. So that's what we do. And we dive into the business to make sure, hey, do you know your numbers? Not only do you know them, can you take those numbers and actually say, how can I make more profit? What do I need to cut back on? What can we actually do to make this a healthy company? And then from there, we automate the profit. I'm a big Profit First fan. So yeah. I like, if you've read that book, Profit First is how do you set up that? That's basically that backbone and structure of your business to make sure you're always going to have something to fall back on. And then from there, with the real estate investing experience that we have together, because John's been in the world, real estate investing world for the past four years, doing a lot of the nitty gritty stuff. What we offer there is making sure like, hey, from our experience, what can we do to help your company actually make and keep more profit from our point of view? So we help in that area too. Yeah. So that's kind of just a little bit about the story and how it all came about because now that's really, once I've seen that, where a lot of investors don't have that peace of mind when it comes to their books and they think, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty. I don't care about the financial side. I just care about the marketing and sales and let's generate all of this. Yeah. But then when the next recession comes, there's not going to be any foundation to say, hey, we can still keep doing this. Yeah. So that's where it really came from. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, <clears throat> I hate paperwork. If I could never touch a contract again, that'd be freaking sweet. And thankfully, yeah. my fiance, Ashley, for some reason, she loves numbers and she'll actually balance a checkbook with the register. Nice. <laughs> and so she's very to the number and her office has got, the, you know, all the labels. And I'm like, geez, I don't know. It's just not in my blood at all. It literally gives me a headache and stresses me out and extreme anxiety. And so when I first started, I started out on wholesaling and then slowly moved into flipping. And uh, as it evolved, it was the only thing on my mind was making money, making money, making money. Um, it wasn't until actually early this year, late last year, where I started tracking every dollar that went in and out. And I was like, oh, we aren't really doing as good as I thought. Right. Um, because you see all this money coming in. Um, but once you dot, even down to how much money we're spending on uh, food every day, I, I do my best to, to eat at the house, but you know, you just get caught up in the day and you eat out. And I'm like, holy crap, we're spending several hundred bucks a month on, on just eating out. And then my marketing, I was like, oh, I'm just going into click to mail and spending a couple hundred bucks every other day. I can't be spending more than 5,000 bucks. And then at one point, I'm like, dude, I spent like $11,000 on, on postcards this month. Like, and then I had no idea. And, and actually to this day, honestly, I, I don't know, have any idea, but um, I tried to get it organized with tracking numbers and stuff, but I don't know my actual KPIs and my marketing. And um, <clears throat> thankfully for me, it gives me a little bit of peace of mind, but most of the investor friends I know don't know either. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I know, you, you probably know him, but Tom Olson up in Indiana. Yep. That's who I worked with up there in Northwest Indiana. Yeah. So he, uh, I've been to his office a couple of times and he was actually the pusher. I don't want to build a company quite as large as he does, but being in his office, I, I uh, did a charity auction. So I won a day at his office and um, he had two 
people sitting in the office doing receipts and bookkeeping all day. I'm like, holy freaking crap. I have nowhere near the type of systems I need in place to be successful. And then now that you're in Richmond, you probably know Rich Lennon. Mm-hmm. And Rich is a homie of my buddy of mine. We're actually going to Vegas next week. And his systems, I've been on a couple of cruises. That he does um, classes on how he set up his VA systems. And he's the one, as, along with Connor Steinbrook, who has gotten me into a VA. So I'm slowly on this path of building a better foundation, but I'm nowhere near there, honestly. And when I got this book, Ash was like, well, what book is that? I'm like, I'm super excited to read this freaking book because my business isn't where it needs to be. Um, but anyways, long story short, I know a ton of investors, probably 80% of the investors I know don't know the numbers at all. While the ones that I know have been through at least one uh, recession or downturn in the market, they're like, I was the same way before, but after that recession knocked me to my knees, they are like, I need a better foundation. And uh, so, yeah, um, I think we still got another year of good market. So that's my, my goal 2020 is to, um, build that better, better foundation and meet more people that have been through those turns and have um, weathered it because they built that solid foundation. So I'm super thankful for that, Josh, for recommending you because I, I, I have a successful business and I'm, I know I'm making money because I track it better now, but nowhere near what I need to be. And right. So, and that's like you said, they're 80% of the investors that you meet they're in the same boat. So it's not like you're in this all by yourself. You've got yeah. a lot of other people that are just like that. But like, and like you said too, the people that actually went through the crash in 2008 and nine, they, they're doing the things now that we're recommending because yeah. they they're, they already put those in place because they know how important that is because they know they need to have that foundation in order to weather the next storm. And I think it's funny you mentioned Tom and Rich because those were the two people I've worked with for the past six years. Right. So <laughs> yeah, funny. I work that it, Rich Lennon is the one that I'm working with now in Virginia and Tom yeah. and Wayne Schaefer were the ones up in Indiana while I was up there. So yeah, just funny that you mentioned both of them, but yeah. the Rich Richmond is one mafia. of the ones that, yes, exactly. The Richmond yeah. mafia. Rich is one of the people that helped me a lot and I'm going to give a lot of credit to him who pushed me to, kind of start this business too. Mm -hmm. He said, you really helped us for the past year. I think you can help a lot of other people. And he's been very key in that and saying like, Hey, a lot of, I think a lot of other investors were in the same, cause he was in the same boat. You were Mm -hmm. probably about a year ago. Didn't know the numbers as well as he would like. He, he had books at least to the point where he was actually keeping track of that stuff. But then he just didn't know it as well as, as maybe he wanted to, or as well so he can make the decisions he needed to. And that's what we did over the past year. And it was like, night and day difference to be able to say, okay, because we just, just this past week, we had our last, what I call profit meeting. It's basically going over what did we make for the last month? And then what did we make year to date? And then what, is there anything that's varied in this last month that, you know, is way off track. So that way we need to see if we need to increase the marketing or decrease spending in some of these areas. And then, you know what, that takes about an hour a month. And He's very happy. And that's what most investors, they just want to see that top level. What am I making? What am I actually keeping? And right. like, what do I, you know, am I good to keep going as a business? And are we on the right track? And if not, that it tells a great story. Do your numbers tell your story of your business? Yeah. So as long as you know your numbers, you know the full picture of your business. You might be able to tell how you started or whatnot. But once you know your numbers and, and the backside, you're able to tell the full 360 and yeah. say, this is my business as a whole. Right. Um, so without giving away the secrets, let's dial it back. If I were, um, let's say six or 12 months in, haven't done anything on my books. I've just done a couple of wholesales. I've done a, maybe a flip or two. I know money's coming in and I know I'm setting out a little bit of marketing. What would you say would be the first step on organizing and building that foundation um, Get- from a low level perspective? Getting a bookkeeper that works on a part-time basis so you don't have to do that, the crazy entries, yeah. you know, because you might not need a full-time bookkeeper like Tom did. He had two people all the time yeah. doing that stuff. So that's another thing. I do have another business for just bookkeeping, but that's kind of more, we have people that actually do the bookkeeping. I don't, I just oversee that. Yeah. So, I mean, we do bookkeeping for real estate investors also, but that's just another portion of what we offer. But to say that that would be the first step is just yeah. making sure you actually have 
a set of books. And then from there, you're working with that bookkeeper to get the mindset, your mindset, to be able to say, hey, this is where these entries should go. Or like, this is, you know, you might say, you might be able to direct them on some of those things, but they should know, like, if it's for this property, as long as they know it's for this property, they're yeah. putting it in the right place. And then they should be able to give you that report at the end. I will say a lot of bookkeepers, that's a good place to start. But a lot of bookkeepers don't have that owner mentality or know exactly the real estate niche to be mm -hmm. able to say, here's the reports you need as an investor. So you were saying without getting the secrets, honestly, the big secret here is having a bookkeeper that really knows what they're doing and really yeah. knows real estate. So that way they're not taking as much time as, as you think a real book, uh, bookkeeper might need. Because if they already know, like if they, as long as you're giving them the correct information or it's already on the bank statement or whatnot of where the property is or, or what they should be able to do a lot of that stuff without, you know, bugging you a bunch of the time. So okay. I would say the first step, get a bookkeeper that's profitable. And I'm all about with the less stress, more profit, making sure that every employee is profitable, even if yeah. a contractor and a bookkeeper, and you say, well, how can a bookkeeper be profitable? Well, are they are they putting the entries in and are they doing it correctly? Are they actually doing the job they were assigned to do? Because right. that gets it off your plate to focus on the higher level tasks. Right. So I would say that's that's a great first step. And if you hire like a part-time bookkeeper or, or a per hour bookkeeper, that's a great place to start because you might only need four hours of bookkeeping the whole month because right. if you're only doing a couple wholesale transactions, so you yeah. might just be able to start off with something like that. <clears throat> so they're just running QuickBooks. Right. Essentially, yeah. So what we'll do now is, um, in the, in the beginning it was me running QuickBooks and it was like, Oh, a month's gone by. I guess I better go back in there and try to figure out these stupid receipts. And then <laughs> anyways, I was screwing up. So then Ashley took over. So it's been a lot better, but so she'll, she'll do the classifications and do all that stuff. And then now I'll keep a running Excel sheet of every single expense that I do based upon where it was spent and which property allocated. So she's just got to correlate it with that Excel into QuickBooks without having to come back to me. Okay. And ask me awesome. another question. So we're getting better at organizing it, yeah. but it's a giant pain. Um, okay. So, um, That's about, kind of where, where to start. Yeah. I was just wondering too, we have John on here and John's been a big part of the company with simple yeah. CFO. He actually does a lot of the, when we work with an actual client, when we actually start, we start with the first process of knowing your numbers. Like, are you getting the numbers you really need to know? And that's where we really dive into the books. And John's a big part of that because he's been doing that for the past three years now where he's actually been bookkeeping for other real estate investors. So yeah. I, when I started this business, I thought, well, who can I, who would, who would be the best fit for an actual like implementer and integrator for me? And I thought of John right away. I've worked with probably 12 to 15 VAs over the past six years. And he by far is the best uh, virtual assistant I've worked with. And so if other virtual assistants that I'm working with are watching this, you guys are all great too, I promise. I've just known John the longest. So yeah. <laughs> just a disclaimer there. But with John, he's very good at taking the information and being able to execute because he's also, just another tip here, we used property managers for our virtual, we used virtual assistants for our property management up in yeah. Indiana and for Virginia, because you were talking about how Rich has that dialed in with his, yeah. his virtual assistants. Well, we took that and from Indiana, even before I knew Rich, we had implemented uh, virtual assistants in property management. And we were running about 98, 99% collections with one VA and one in-house person running about 80 to 100 rentals. So wow. we had it dialed in. We knew our That's systems crazy. and processes. Yeah, but the key there is having someone focused on that. We yeah. had four key areas that we made them focus on every single day. We would have a daily meeting until we were comfortable like saying, okay, now it just needs to be three days a week. Now it's a weekly meeting to go over our KPIs. Once we got, we knew we, they had that mindset, we would have a daily meeting all the way up until we said, here's the KPIs. You need to report on this. And now we know if, this, if you're running it well or not. So, yeah. and we were doing that and running like I said, really high collection rates. And then in Richmond, Virginia too, where there's about 30 or 40 rentals we're managing with only one VA, no in-house person. And they're about 95 to 99% collections for the past year. Yeah. So they've been running it. And all that is systems and processes and really just taking your mindset and thinking, what, what am I doing now that a virtual yeah. assistant could do that I don't have to be in person for? And that's really th because... A lot of people think of virtual assistants as virtual assistants and not people, but they're great people. At the at the core of it, 
John is a great person. He's going to get the job done and he's going to do it well. So that's what you're really looking for when you hire a virtual assistant. You're looking for the type of person who's going to get it done, not yeah. the type of person who just gives you what you want to hear, but they say, okay, tell me what I need to do and I'll go do it and they'll do a good job and they won't sleep until they know that job is done. Yeah. And that's where we've worked with a lot of virtual assistants who are those type of people. But that's the same thing with your own. If you had in-house employees too, you would want to make sure the type of person that you brought on board fit your core values and was someone who's going to get it done and yeah. be focused on results. So that I just wanted to, to compliment John too, but also say, just <laughs> kind of bring into the conversation, the virtual assistant, since you had brought that up a few minutes ago. Yeah. So I, I, I implemented virtual assistants late last year. And at, at one point they were doing, um, my data scrubbing, my data, my list importing, the data stacking. Um, they're sending up postcards, R RVM. Uh, uh, they're doing my mass texting. We were emailing uh, 50,000 realtors a day. Um, we were doing all kinds of stuff. And I kind of dialed that down this year <clears throat> because like I told you earlier, I didn't re really want to build this huge company. I'm kind of changing my mind now, but um, to, to really bring in your past conversation to a, um, a numerical answer really. Cause I know Rich personally and I've seen him speak on, um, his platform 360 Vester several times. Mm -hmm. He was able to build a podio system with the VAs. And I, I think you were a part of that 360 deal now that I'm looking back in time. Yeah, that was yeah. during this whole, re I've done a lot of things in the past six years. And a part yeah. of that, while I was in the real estate investing world, we had a side business where we would build podio systems for people. And Rich yeah. was one of the ones where we helped build the 360 investors. I think, I think I actually met you in Richmond one time and he was like, Rich is like, don't talk to me about 360 investors. Go talk to this guy over here. <laughs> so I think we actually <laughs> met at one point, but uh, to bring it to, so Rich had always, he's, um, Crap, what is his freaking name? Jim Ingersoll. So we were at Jim Ingersoll's deal and Rich is having his little class and talking about technology and Podio. And uh, his, his favorite thing to talk about was how easily and cheap he was able to get his property management down. And so uh, on a high level, uh, from a you know, bird's eye view, most investors are spending 8 to 10% on property management or sometimes more, you know, depending if it was improperly, but he always, um, it wasn't bragging, but he would always, uh, boast about getting his percentage down. What was it like? 4%? 1%. Jeez. Yeah. 1 so property management. Yeah. That's nuts. So that was done through, um, having great integrators and VAs, but also a great CRM. Um, so anyways, that, that's, I, I wanted to, to encapsulate that conversation because it's extremely powerful. Um, mm -hmm. which is why I brought in the VAs too. So yeah, Rich was, I heard him talk on a cruise once um, last January and I was like, holy crap. Before I knew him personally, I was like, man, this guy is a genius. And uh, yeah, anyways, he was a really smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. Rich is a really smart guy. I'll refrain my, my, uh, my comments because usually I'll, we have good banter back and forth, Rich and I, but he, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, he's, he's an awesome guy. He, yeah actually has like also he just built out or we did a virtual assistant hiring funnel too so really? where you can yeah if you go to his website <laughs> rva property solutions forward slash hiring process he's yeah. got on there where you can it's basically a template of how to structure a whole funnel to be able to hire a virtual assistant he's really? also just started offering for an extra fee to find people too, like virtual assistants. But then basically we're, so we're not like a, an actual sourcing company. It's more yeah. like we'll find them. And then if we find a good candidate for you, then you go from there and, and you right. can see if you want them or not. And then they're basically your VA. It's not tied to our company from right. there or, or anything. So he does have that too, because a lot of people were coming to him and saying, where are you getting these virtual assistants? Yeah. So last year we recorded a whole class on it. So you get like that whole recording. It's about a two hour class that we did wow. on it. And we actually had, I think about six or seven of the virtual assistants in that class on zoom. So they That's were cool. actually speaking about their, their actual involvement too. So there it's, we talked about systems. We talked about how we interact with them. And then we actually had them on too, talking yeah. about their interactions and their viewpoints with us. That's so. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get John to talk. He's been sitting there quietly. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not going to, we're not going to allow this. 
So John, tell us who you are and uh, how you helped David here with, with uh, the business. Uh, yeah, well, I first uh, started as a VA for real estate investor uh, four years ago. Uh, actually, David was my first client. And uh, when he was back in uh, uh, Indiana, so basically, uh, every uh, seat that David has uh, has been, uh, I am a part of it. So from the acquisitions, uh, property management, finance, and some other stuff, um, yeah, I, I've been with David uh, through all those uh, seats in the real estate investment world. So awesome. yeah, that's basically what I did. So when David reached out to me and said that uh, he is starting a business. Uh, I didn't hesitate to, you know, jump aboard because I know David. Uh, he gives me a lot of credit, but to be honest, I've everything I've learned, I've learned from him. So, yeah, he's the man. It's <laughs> awesome. Thanks, John. So, John, where are you from? Because right now I'm thinking about um, the extreme, the, the awesome technology we're provided right now with Zoom. Um, mm-hmm. And when we think of VA's virtual assistants, you're not in America. Where are you from right now? Or where are you at? Yeah, I'm, a- yeah, I'm actually from the Philippines. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. I, I mean, technology <laughs> always amazes me every day. Um, I have it a good is. friend. I have a new friend, good friend in Nigeria. And I'm thinking, we're on WhatsApp video chatting. I'm like, this is amazing. So, uh, anyway, so uh, now with uh, uh, simple, simple CFO Solutions, um, what is your role there and how do you help the investors that you guys bring on build a better, stronger business? Yeah, well, basically what I do aside from, you know, uh, looking at their QuickBooks and doing some book works, uh, we also do, I'm also the one, sometimes I'm also the one who schedule meetings with the client. Same yeah. example, they do have questions. I need to show them something, how, how to get it done. Yeah. So we usually set a meeting uh, via Zoom and I show them how to do it properly on their books. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So dialing in on the numbers that we don't necessarily want to do. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then from there, uh, once you've dialed in the numbers um, and shown the investor what they're doing right and doing wrong, uh, you help them to correct those or guidance on how to better calculate and keep up with KPIs and such? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Awesome. And John, John's a big part of that. And mm-hmm. also from there, once we know that, and it depends on which level they're at because we have three different levels, but if they're in that middle level, from there, once they actually know their numbers, we implement profit first for them. Yeah. So we are actually profit first, you know, certified or whatever. Yeah. But so we actually do that. So it, it's not only taking it now, you know, your numbers, let's do something with those numbers and make sure right. you've got that solid foundation. And John's a key part of that too. So we, we do the assessment and then we make sure that they've got the proper steps to, in order to implement that. And then from there is the profit strategy sessions where John and I get on and say, okay, what do you, and this is another EOS term, but what rocks do you have this quarter and how can we help you push your business forward with what your goals are? Yeah. And John, John is very modest, but he's very good at the, also the other side of it. On the actual business portion, we want to make sure we're giving the best service all the time. That's why we only work with a few investors a quarter because we, we are very responsive. We make sure if you ever have a question, we're right there. But we're also very proactive, too, to the point like there's every single day we're doing something for you, whether that's on your books or if we're reaching out to you and saying, hey, what, what, do you, what would you like from us? Almost to the point like, to the accountability point, where where are you right now and how can we help you push forward today, no matter what it is? If we already have a task, we're definitely moving forward on that task. Or if yep. there's anything else you need from us, what do you need? And John's a huge part of that. I know he's he's very humble, which is a great quality, but it's also, he's a key part in that too, making sure we provide the best level of service to everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, to rewind all of this and kind of step aside from the topic of helping others, what hurdles, because I like to talk about how people or entrepreneurs started their business and why they started the business. So we kind of dialed in why you started yours. What hurdles did you uh, hit while building this business? Can I, I want to tell you something, and this is, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but it's like, I've always been the type of person I try and find the information I really need and dive into it yeah. to be the most efficient. 
that's why, because a lot of people j- jump into business and say, I want to help everyone all the time. I yeah. was like, no, 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 no. I want to help real estate investors, 10 a quarter, and I want to provide the best service, not the most service. Right. So when the biggest hurdle I'm struggling with right now is just getting my name out there, you know, yeah. just, just that this service is available. I wanted to write the book too, because this is just, even if I can't help you in this service, this at least gives you a lot of the stuff that I talk about. Yeah. It gives you some very practical steps to use. So I wanted to write that book, not only to get my name out there, but also to say, this is some practical steps you can use. So right. I will say when I first started the business, I read a ton on what I needed to do to make it an actual business to be the best for the, the end result for those people. I know you say, well, step it back from helping others. But at the yeah. end of the day, I want to make sure we're providing that best service. So it was like, and I'll, I'll give you kind of my secret sauce behind it. I'm mm-hmm. a huge Dan Kennedy fan and the no, no BS guide yeah. to, to business building. And he's got a whole series. I read all of those books. I think he's got about 12 to 15. And I read every single one of them in the span of about two months. Mm-hmm. So I'm a very intense reader. And I'm very, especially once I'm passionate about something, I yeah. dive into it. And that just helped me start the business out where I'm going to be the most effective. And I don't want to be working with every everyone. I want to work with the 10 that need the help the most and that are able to actually implement what I'm what I'm providing. So that's really what the mindset behind it was. I needed to find that knowledge in order to make sure I was starting it the best way possible and then take action on that knowledge. I mean, one of the things he said is write a book that'll help get your name out there. Well, you know, it took me about a month, but it was like setting a goal, 1500 words a day, every, you know, every weekday. So that way I would actually hit that goal. So yeah. I'm kind of telling you a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, I just want people to know, like, this is, we're trying to make it the best service possible to the best business possible. And not just like, Hey, we work with everyone. Hopefully yeah. we do good for you. Hopefully we don't. Cause if we don't perform for you, we'll give you all your money back. I don't yeah. want to work with you unless we provide value. So the biggest struggle I have right now is just getting my name out there and actually working with investors. Right now, I'm still I'm still working with Rich, but and he we've switched to uh, he is actually one of the first clients to the act of this business because he's like you know I just want to make sure we're still doing this stuff right. in our business. So, but I'm actually working with about six or seven people right now in this quarter and in January 2020 when I opened the doors wide open, I only wanted to be about ten investors. Yeah. So that's really. I'm just now filling the pipeline for January through March. And then from there, I've actually got a couple of people who have paid for a whole year in advance. So wow. I've already got a couple of people for those slots. Yeah. But they, those are people that I've known for years and they know like, hey, I'm going to actually, you know, we're going to push that forward. So right. that's why a couple of those people. So really all in all, I probably have about eight slots for the, the January thing. So that would be my biggest struggle right now is just getting my name out there and letting people yeah. know we want to provide a service that's actually going to bring value and not just, they don't have to worry about, are they thinking about me today? Are, are they pushing it forward? Cause we're almost to the point where we want to make sure if you're not communicating with us, we're communicating with you. Cause right. we put to do's together. We, we make sure every single week we're pushing forward. Yeah. No, it's awesome. I mean, you, from, from out, 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 right out the gate, you had an idea of what you want and you stuck with it. Um, whereas I think, uh, um, especially me, I'm like, yeah, I'll get in the wholesaling. And then, okay, I'll start flipping. And then I'm like, oh, owner finance sounds pretty cool. Oh man, sub two sounds pretty cool. What's this lease to, or lease to own deal? And then I'm like, man, I can't keep it dialed. So um, I'm sure you could probably help dial in somebody's company too, because you'll be able to see the leaks yes. in it coming from the cracks and you need to not concentrate on this. You're spending money here. It's not making anything. Because um, there's a lot of things that I've done in my business over time where, um, I think it's working, but I couldn't actually tell you dollar for dollar if it's actually working. So, right. um, I think it's pretty smart of you to really know what you wanted and just stick to it right off the bat. Cause I didn't do that and I'm still, it not is doing totally, it. <laughs> and I totally get that, that mindset too, because I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Yeah. So I see those shiny objects all the time. People have come to me like, well, why don't you do something with with virtual assistants? And I'm like, no, I know people who can help you with that. Let me pin you to that. That's not my core focus yeah. right now. We have some solutions for that, but that's not, I only want to take on the things I know that is our core excellence and that we can really provide that value. So that's yeah. really where we're trying to stay in. And not that I'll never expand to anything else, but I want to make sure we're, we've got this dialed in and Hey, 
one day I'll replace myself inside of this business with other people that can do the these types of things. And then from yeah. there, I'll build another business, but it's going to be that same. Okay, what can we focus on? So yeah. that way we know from the gate, we're going to be profitable and we can actually weather any storm. Right. No, that's awesome. It's awesome. Um, we didn't touch, well, we talked about the book a couple of times, but uh, can you give us a 30,000 foot view of the book? Uh, what sure. it goes over? It goes over the knowing your numbers, automating yeah. your profit and, and like the profit strategy sessions and what you can do to make more, more profit. So it really yeah. goes over those three key areas. I have two sex sections of the book, less stress and more profit, just yeah. like the title. So yeah. the less stress is more about the actual knowing your numbers. And then the more profit is really about, you know, the profit system and the profit strategy sessions and those things. And with the book also, I'm getting it transcribed into an audio book and an nice. ebook too, because yeah. I know that a lot of real estate, I'm a real estate investor too. I'm always yeah. listening to a book on, yeah. my, on Audible or whatnot. So I'm getting it transcribed into that right now too. So that'll be coming out over the next month. Awesome. That's, that's cool. Cause although I've got a little nice collection of books over here, I probably read a quarter of them. Um, right. <laughs> and most of them are on my audible. So, um, and then I showed you my pile of books, man, it drives me nuts having to actually read a real book. And, uh, yep. I'll sleep, but that's cool. I totally understand that. Uh, but this one, it, uh, looks like a quick read. So I'll be able yes. to get through it and, and not fall asleep because yep. I'll just, the only time I ever get time to, to read is at night. And then it's just the worst time to read for me anyways. Yep. I totally understand. Well, cool, man. I appreciate it. Um, it's strange that we know a lot of the same people, but also pretty cool uh, for me. It, it, it's a uh, proof of concept, especially yep. since I know, I know Rich personally and um, man, solid, solid dude, super nice dude. Been to his house. Oh, yeah, He's sure. got the most loving family. His wife just wrote a book. Um, yes. Yeah. What would so, water do? Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Um, and then, uh, what would be the best way for people to reach out to if they want to uh, learn more? Sure. Simple CFO solutions.com. Oh, it's easy. very, very simple. Yeah. So that's what we try and make it. And on there we have people apply for, for the services. So on there, there's a big apply button in the right top corner or right mm -hmm. on the main page. There's a business health checkup. Yep. If you're like, well, let's do that. Or there's a, a tab at the top recession proof business. It has the link to the, the book on Amazon. If someone wants to actually pick up the less stress, more profit book okay. on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then I'll find that Amazon link and I'll put it on there for you. And then awesome. as well as the, the, uh, dot com site there. Um, and then before we wrap up, I always ask everybody the same question that kind of brings the whole conversation to the here and now and um, steps outside of the business mind. But if you had six months to live, what would you do with it? What would I do with it? Yeah. I would be doing what I'm doing right now because yeah. I, honestly, this is great. I'm working where I want to work with yeah. the people I want to work with. I've got yeah. great teammates on with John and the other people that are like contractors that I work with. Mm -hmm. And then I have time for my family too. That's why I'm working with 10 investors, making sure I, I bring them value. But tonight we're going trick or treating, you know, yeah. like there's as long as it doesn't rain really heavily yeah. here, it's supposed right. to rain here, but that I get to do those types of things. And in the morning I get to play with my daughter in the morning and I get to the lunch breaks and I'm here with her and yeah. then at night too. So I'm really big on family, just like a lot of people are. So mm -hmm. I would honestly, I'm living a pretty, I really like my life right now. And that's yeah. a lot because the business is running how it should be and i'm working with the people i want to but then i also get to spend the time that i want with the people that i love yeah so. it's awesome it's amazing not you know most people will, will will say those things but you can see in their eyes that um they're like man i'm not really doing what i want to be doing so i can see it in yours that you you truly are happy with what you're doing mm -hmm. so well cool man um i wrote down a book here dan kennedy or that's the author what was his book yeah. series again the no BS series. If you just type in Dan Kennedy, no BS series. Okay. It changed my whole mindset. Once yeah. again, my mindset's been changed so many times over the years. Yeah. I don't know who I am anymore. Just kidding. Right. But the no BS series is a great one. If you just want the business in the fundamentals and he's great, he is a big advocate of direct mail marketing too. So yeah. he gives a lot of great pointers in a lot of his books on that too. So yeah. just a couple of key things there you could take away. 
Cool. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Um, I'll link those down below and they can t- check them out in the uh, notes section, but I appreciate your time. I oh, appreciate you having us on here. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, John. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks. See you, David. Yeah. Bye.